Installing Cisco Unified Communication Manager in VMware at MicroNugget speed. <laughs> First off, that's impossible unless we go back to the original name of Call Manager. All in favor of that? Aye. Let's do it. We first have to answer the question of why are we doing this? Well, if you need hands-on experience with Call Manager, one of the only ways to do it is to go buy one of the Cisco approved hardware platforms, which cost a fortune. So most people have some form of virtualization software considering that VMware is free in certain flavors. Uh, so you can use that rather than purchasing the software and set up your own little lab. Second off, Cisco, in their kind, gracious ways, has chosen to in include 50 device unit licenses with an unregistered version of Call Manager. Now, that doesn't equate to 50 devices because each device may consume more than one unit. However, for a lab environment, there's more than enough devices to play with. Okay, next question. People say, okay, we're going to install the Call Manager software. Where do I get it from? Uh, well, when I did this originally, I literally went to eBay and typed in CUCM, and there are people selling all kinds of stuff. There was, there was actually a guy selling his DVDs from his company. Uh, I, I paid like 50 bucks for it, but I mean, you can, I mean, there's there's one, you know, it's probably just someone with a USB key that's put a, a VMware image on there, or, or here's another. Um, or, it, you know, if you just type in some, some tactful, uh, <laughs> or you can pay $20,000 for it uh, from the Russian Federation uh, and, and it's not a demo uh, but I would like to see what happens when you call Cisco for support uh, anyway uh, you can type in some tactful Google search terms and, and usually find it and I so again I'm talking for lab purposes only because Cisco actually includes 50 device license units uh, for you to use uh, with with this um, to, to where now it's not 50 devices because each device consumes more than one device unit but for a lab come on that's totally more than enough thank you Cisco for helpfulness there now I'm using VMware Workstation 8 which is a licensed product it costs money uh, you can actually use VMware server it works too uh, that's a free product uh, you can use VMware ESXi also a free product which that's where you dedicate a machine bare bones I mean there's other ways to do it you know I, I can, I've gotten a couple questions can I use like Oracle VirtualBox or Sun Micro you know what a, it, yes, I think you can. I've never tried it, but I did see uh, where somebody's put a little blog where you, you literally get into the installation and tweak the, the installations check to skip the hardware check to where it, it just goes right by. I'm like, man, well, if you do that, you can install it on anything. But I haven't, I haven't tested that. I'm just showing you what I know works. So I'm in VMware Workstation. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. You want to get the hardware specs correct. I'm going to just use Tipple. You can go custom if you want. I've already pointed it to an ISO file that I have for uh, Call Manager CUCM 8.62. Uh, hit next. Linux is the operating system that you want, specifically Red Hat Linux, you know, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't really matter uh, which one you use. I'll just use 3 here. Um, it says, what do you want to name? I'll say CUCM Lab. Oh, and you want it, you know, what, where do you want to locate it? Okay, big thing here. You want to make sure that you use 80 gigabytes for the hard disk size. If you go below that, the installation is going to bomb out. Now, now, does that mean, you know, you're like, but I only have a, you know, I, I bought a 100 gig solid state drive, which I have no space left. It doesn't actually take 80 gigabytes. So hopefully you've got virtualization software like VMware Workstation, where it doesn't actually chomp the whole 80 gigabytes right there. Uh, it's just going to, you know, it's it's going to, I think, I would say the installation maybe uses 10. Uh, I haven't checked, checked this flavor of it, but um, it's not going to be the full 80 gigs. It's just a hardware check that you have to get by during the install. Uh, so before we, we go into the uh, power of this on, we want to go and make sure that we have enough memory as well. I've heard of people doing it with one gig of memory but I would say if if you got it crank it go up to two gigs it'll speed you up and also when this thing is running if it's on a gig it's just like oh come on yeah, now uh, I believe in some of the later versions there's a hardware check where if you go below two gigs it's going to bomb out again I haven't tested that but uh, I have heard that happening processors you know you know I've got I've got a killer i7 but you don't need you know to assign a quad processor it just it just works right big thing here on the network I want to make sure it's accessible if you share the host IP address you're going to get some funky you know VMware like it creates this little 192.168 subnet for it um, what I do is I bridge this thing out I say okay I'm going to bridge it to well and this is where you got to get into the, the VMware networking to find out which physical network card uh, you're sending this to but you know that's good now I can go ahead and hit finish and it's going to power this thing on and man is that thing fast Brrr, you know just watching Linux boot and all of its uh, glory from from a, a beefy machine so it's going to go through this boot process 
and you eventually land at this screen. No, we do not want to perform a media check. Now notice, it actually passed the hardware detection. It says VMware is good, it's recognized. Thank you, Cisco, for allowing us to do that. Now it's asking what kind of product do you want to install? Uh, it, it, even below it says, you know, we can't install Unity Connection, Business Edition, all, all those kind of things. So I'll just say, okay, I'm going to choose the Unified Communication Manager. That's what we're after. And literally, after this, it's just follow the wizard to where I'm saying, okay, uh, do you want to proceed? Sure. Uh, it's going to come up and now have a gamut of questions that it ranges from, you know, do you want to put upgrade patches on here? You know, basic. Oh, what's your time zone? I mean, this, <laughs> this is where I'm going to end the micro nugget because uh, you, you, this, this is stuff that you know, right? What is your NIC speed and duplex? Do you want the MTU size change? Do I want DHCP? No, I do not. Do I, you know, I'll name this guy C UCM, give it the IP address 172.30.175, you know, give it a subnet mask. All, I mean, this is all the normal stuff we do anytime we configure any kind of server. The beauty is once it's all said and done, we're able to just pull open a web browser and point at that IP address that I just used uh, for, uh, for the server, and it's good to go. See, I'm getting sucked in. Okay, so for now, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.